guys, and welcome to Revna Den. I'm Michael Hassenfang, and this is episode 15, Is This All Just Pentecostal Mumbo Jumbo? And it's a pretty good question, because I'm sort of, I'm sort of kind of pondering that question myself, too. Um, I think the first thing we need to do is uh, maybe realize what the word Pentecostal is, or it comes from the term Pentecost during the time of the uh, upper room scenario after Jesus uh, died, was risen from the grave, and came and spoke to his disciples and about 500 other people that witnessed his resurrection. He went up to heaven, and uh, then the Holy Spirit came down during Pentecost and, you know, had the flames of uh, fire land on everyone's head, and everyone was speaking in tongues and healing and doing all sorts of wild stuff. The, through the power of the Holy Spirit. And so Pentecostal is a particular denominational sect that believes primarily focuses and hones in on the gifts of the Holy Spirit, the baptism of the Holy Spirit, speaking of tongues, healings, exorcisms, raising of the dead, if you will. And um, there seems to be a lot of talk about that today, especially with what is going down with this last harvest movement and the explosion of prophets that have just uh, pretty much run rampant over places like YouTube and Rumble. And if you haven't been noticing this, you haven't been paying attention because it's just by the hundreds and hundreds, if not thousands, that have come out within these last few years, um, especially after 2020 with the weird thing that had happened with the so-called uh, legitimate election that we've had, all of a sudden there was just an explosion of prophets that came out and started emphasizing on what is going down within these last days. And I was never really one um, previous to that who believed in such things or so much into speaking in tongues or prophesying or seeing visions or having dreams and such uh, as as I do now because even I've experienced them I've seen other people experience them I've seen other people who are supposedly prophets talk about particular words that the Lord given to them and it actually happens in real life so uh, too many to number like too too many to name off and list um, I've been trying to do that, as you can see, with each episode, putting in a specific person to go and check out online and give them their link, or sorry, give you their link so that you can check them out and listen to some of the words that they were saying. Some of the sites, some of the prophets and prophetesses that are out there give even uh, certain links on their own site, certain pages where they go through and say, here's all the words that we've given to all the prophecies which have been fulfilled within these uh, latter days. So it's been kind of interesting. And I think I'm going to uh, jump into this just straight off with communion before I dive any deeper into this whole Pentecostal thing. And if it's really just a, a giant hoax or a joke or a misunderstanding, or if it's the real deal and something is going down. So let's dive into this. Just had to unpause so I can, or pause it so I could grab the wine since it was off a ways. Putting that in, as you can see, I still have the kosher wine. And I did get some of the Kavanaugh wafers. I wanted to get the big Eucharist ones. Uh, my great grandfather used to have those during family gatherings say like christmas time and stuff like that and he'd break it off and give us all peace and stuff but that was more of a catholic thing because i believe he got it from a priest where you know they blessed it and it was very you know very more in depth with him as opposed to just going down to the store and buying some <laughs> some communion wafers uh though i don't think there's really much of a difference um I get into that a little bit on the previous episode, you know, the reason for communion. So I believe as long as you partake it you know, with the wine and or grape juice, if you really want to be that, you know, that, uh, I guess, light. And so, grape juice, wine, 
wafers, make sure, if you can, that it's unleavened because it is a bit of a symbolism against puffing up. So that's the, the only thing that I would say for communion wafers. Just do something that is a flatbread, if you will, that doesn't have yeast to puff it up and to symbolize sin in one's life. So this is supposed to be in relationship to Christ who was without sin. That's why we now add the yeast to it to symbolize the puffing up and that he broke his sinless body for us and died for us so that we can have forgiveness of sins and enter into God's kingdom. As well as partaking of the blood which covers the sins. And Heavenly Father, we come to you today and talk about the whole speculation of what is going down these days with these prophetic words and so many people just coming out of the woodwork by the masses, me being one of them as well, even though I don't consider myself a prophet in any way, shape, or form. I've had dreams and visions as well. You've spoken to me personally within on some certain topics. Uh, even came to me, if I'm not mistaken, in the dream that I've had. So many people are having these things that we're being almost compelled to go out and make these videos and express these things to the people so that they can wake up to what is going on these days. And the question does arise in so many people, myself included, as I'm well as sure as uh, many other prophets that are out there even having a bit of self-doubt going, is this, is this real? Is this legit? This has been going on for so long. We need to have faith and, and grounding in what you are doing and what you are saying. But... We need to have a discerning spirit and to look into and follow you and listen to the Holy Spirit so that the convictions that we have with these videos that we are making, with the expressions that we are giving outward to these people across the world, not just this nation, but everywhere, to wake up to this last harvest season. Is this the real deal or is this just wishful thinking? Is it mass hysteria? I mean, is it is it really the Holy Spirit speaking through all of us in that we are trying to do this as a means to wake up others, to pave the way, to make the path setting, the, the, the pioneering season that many of us are in, even the cave dwelling seasons of just being in isolation and preparing the way for what you have in store for the rest of the world. And we're just the path setters to get them, get them aroused, to blow the trumpet, if you will, and to awaken the sleepers within the this nation and around the world to what is going to be happening. We ask these things uh, with a discerning heart and looking forward to exactly what it is that you want us to do. And hopefully this is not all just wishful thinking. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Yeah, it's a pretty interesting topic. A lot of people have been bringing up um, just the things that are on Facebook uh, there's a lot of sites, a lot of pages that I go to. <laughs> I go to a lot of debate sites. Um, I'm not going to name certain ones because some of them are, are pretty, <laughs> pretty intense. And they're very, um, what's the word, uh, bias in certain denominational ways of thinking. Um, or it's stuff like creationism versus evolution, you know, so it's not just the atheists or um, the, the science community, which to me is a joke because you can't say it's science versus, you know, religion, which is nonsense because science is nothing more than the study of this earth, you know, and that can fall into creationism as well, too. It's not just in solid brick, you know, locked in stone, that it is evolution, which is complete and utter nonsense. You could listen to a whole bunch of people like Ken Ham and Kent Hoven uh, with Answers in Genesis or the, the CSE courses, um, Chuck Missler even. Uh, there's the Evolution Crunchers, which is a book I recommended back a couple episodes ago which uh, is a free PDF. You, know, you could go on to that episode. I can't remember which one it was, but go and download that. It's 900 pages of scientific, actual scientific, um, explaining the creationism versus evolution, how evolution is just totally debunked. Uh, 
So it's, it's not just that, but it's also the struggles that we have within certain denominations or ideologies we have within our faith that, you know, is either pro or con, yay or nay to these things, such as the Pentecostal movement um, with the gifts of the Spirit. And I don't like using the word Pentecostal. It's, it's like saying, it's like trying to shoehorn in a particular aspect of God and what he's calling us to do into one sect. That it'd be like saying, uh, only the Baptists work in baptism, you know, which is, which is nonsense. It's like their, their focal point is baptism and that's it and nothing else. And no other denomination should listen to that process of baptism because that's for the Baptists and for the Pentecostals, everything with the gifts of the spirit pertains to them and no other denomination. Now, their focus is on gifts of the Spirit. That's why they're called Pentecostals. Um, in the same way, I guess, Seventh-day Adventists believe that Saturday is a day of worship, which, I mean, you know, that's a totally different subject. Personally, I don't care what you do. I personally think that there's a difference between the day of rest and the day of worship. But I don't think we're going to fall into that rabbit hole um, I believe that there's a day of rest, which is Saturday, and the first day of the week, which is a day of worship, which is Sunday. And also because um, taking that day of worship from the Jews and then putting it to Sunday to uh, symbolize the Lord's resurrection day and stuff, I, I suppose, is another reason why we moved it to that particular day. So there's a lot of talk about that which day should be what and you're, you're breaking the lord's rules by doing this and i think that's just a bunch of nonsense so uh you, again you're shoehorning that specific day that specific day of worship or that specific that specific day of rest excuse me um either or however you use it into that particular denomination and I think the problem with a lot of denominations, a lot of sects within Christianity, is that they focus on one particular thing, which could be a pro very much, but they turn it into a con because of that, or other denominations turn it into a con because it is their main focus. And they think that because it is the main focus, they exclude everything else within their denomination as practice. If you know what I mean? Well, these guys just speak in tongues and that's all that they talk about. It's like, that's not all that they talk about. Come on. It's like to do the Baptists. All they talk about is baptism and nothing else. Come on. It's getting a little ridiculous. So I don't like to use the term Pentecostal when describing these prophecies, these dreams and visions that these people are having, the words that are going out today, the healings that we're seeing. Um, I haven't seen any raising of the dead yet, though I have heard some stories from a bunch of other prophets where they have spoken and the person actually came back to life. So, uh, me, I'm always with a discerning heart on that, skeptical, I'll listen to what they have to say, but uh, unless I, <laughs> unless they're holding up a camera, filming it, and then showing the world, uh, I'm going to be a little bit skeptical and stuff like that. Um, healing, exorcisms, this is coming from a person who's actually done exorcisms, so even then I'm skeptical at watching what people do and i always try to have a discerning heart when people speak in tongues you always need to have a discerning heart i see certain videos of people um at a church service one speaking in tongues and another person calling out what they were saying you know like answering like this is what they were speaking in tongues i'm going to relay it to the church so that they can be edified again Biblically, that's how it's supposed to be done when within a congregation. Uh, outside the congregation, yes, you could speak in tongues. It's usually used for self-edification or for speaking words that you can't even emphasize by yourself. So you need the Holy Spirit to come in and speak the tongues out to give declarations and decrees to the Father and set them into motion. It is a self-edification. That doesn't mean you can't speak in tongues when you're by yourself. There's a lot of people that say that, which is, to me, ridiculous, because the Bible literally says that's the primary reason for it. The secondary reason for it is if you're in the church and the Holy Spirit wants to relay a message and he speaks to you in tongues, let there be another that can decipher it for you. I've seen that, and again, I'm also skeptical because a question arises what's not stopping these two from getting together before the service to hash out what it is they're going to be doing, you know, like a parlor trick, you know, not to say these people are charlatans, but those things always arise. So you always have to have that in the back of your head, what you need to be very discerning on these and ask the Holy Spirit, Lord, is this legit? Is this fake? Is this real? Is what's going on? What is going on with this, uh, 
exorcism, you know, like uh, the, the banishing of the spirit within the church um, during one of their shows. There's a lot of people that are saying things like, uh, you know, well, Christians can't be possessed. Yeah, but a lot of people that are coming to the service might not be Christians yet or Christian in name and haven't given themselves up to the Lord. They're, they're still bound by the oppression of the demonic spirits and even some possession. So just because you're in a church doesn't mean you've truly given your life to Christ or are a true Christian to the point that you have the spirit indwelling within you so that no other demonic entities can come in because the Holy Spirit is already within you and will kick them out. This is why Christians, true Christians can't be possessed because if you have the Holy Spirit, you have Jesus residing within you, demons aren't going to come in. Just like the Bible verse where it says, uh, if they come and see that the floors are swept clean and everything is removed and everything is emptied out, they'll come back in with seven more who are even stronger than they are and repossess that person. This is why it's saying you need to have the house occupied. So if you don't have the house occupied with Jesus or, you know, have the Holy Spirit within you, yeah, you can have possession again. So do I believe that Christians can be possessed? Technically, no, if they're true Christians, if they're just Christian in name or if they're just coming to their church and checking it out and they do have a lot of oppression or coming there to be healed, then yeah, there could be exorcisms within the church. We see this in a lot of videos uh, like that one film, um, who does it? Greg Locke. Uh, I haven't watched it yet. I believe it's called uh, Come Out in the Name of Jesus. Or come out in Jesus name something like that I, I, I really want to watch it because um, it is a topic of mine that I am interested in and I have seen other um, exorcisms and banishings and uh, stuff like that play out in other films as well too, other documentaries and stuff uh, so there there is there is some truth to it you know that, that people can be exercised within a church I don't think that just because they're in a church they're instantly you know get out of jail free card and I think a lot of people kind of jump on that and start putting in their own discernments or their, their own biases sorry probably a better way to phrase it their own biases to what these exorcisms are and that they're fake because well these people are a church or Christians they can't be possessed it's like you need to kind of redo your calculation a little bit first and figure out why they're being exercised why are they there are they even christian just because they're in the church doesn't mean that they are so um i'm gonna get a sip here hold on <clears throat> healings now healings are the one thing that i have seen a lot of <laughs> i've seen a lot of different um video clips of different pastors or different prophets healing people and again goes back to the speaking in tongues and another person relaying the message what's stopping these two people from getting together you know prior to the service and um you know hashing out this thing where i'm going to stand up out of my wheelchair and walk it's like well the only way that this could possibly happen is if the person who's crippled really doesn't know and like nobody knows them like this is somebody like i'm flying you in from utah and you're coming over here to tennessee and you're going to play a cripple and i'm going to heal you and you're going to walk but for the most part the healings that i've seen um there's people around them like they know this person they, they've been either going to that church for decades or they have family members there and they're bringing them in and they're healed and miraculously they're walking so Unless everyone's in on it, you know, and everyone's exposed, and that, you know, or not, I shouldn't say exposed, everyone is a fraud uh, and not exposed as a fraud or later exposed as a fraud. Um, that brings up the main question um, to all of this. Why would they do that? Now, this... I, I, I think this is the focal point that I was trying to come to in the whole series, and maybe I'm just coming to it a little too early in this episode. Maybe this episode will be shorter than a half hour. I don't know. But I think the main thing, <coughs> I'm sorry, I think the main thing with discernment to all this stuff that is happening today, the prophetic words, the healings that are happening, the exorcisms that are happening, even uh, with Julie Green and Manuel Johnson, the anointing of the oil, which I keep mentioning, where they go to uh, certain festivals or certain gatherings and they anoint people's head with oil. And you literally watch in the bottle, the oil raise back up, like God's refilling the oil supernaturally. Um, uh, certain 
r rarities of people being raised from the dead, even though I haven't visually seen that in a video yet. Uh, no, I, I take that back. I, I've seen I've seen one video where that's happened, and I still don't know if it's real or not. Um, it wasn't here in the U.S. I think it was maybe Haiti or some. It was in some third world. Some kid was raised back from the dead, and again the question arises: like. Is this real? Is this fake? Is this a charlatan? Is this some sort of spoof to get people drawn in or to get clicks or to get even money? You know, maybe these people are like charlatans and they're like, hey, look at me, heal this, bring in, you know, give me cash. Um, it's the only thing that I could think of on, on why they would do things like this, why there's so many prophets speaking into this. Um, Let's just assume for a second, and this is where I'm getting back to the main point of uh, the whole Pentecostal, is it mumbo jumbo stuff. Uh, let, let me start off with what I was saying previously about a particular person named Ron Wyatt, where he, um, I, I shouldn't say discovered, but he helped take over certain projects like the finding of Noah's Ark on Mount Ararat where even to this day, people are like, is this real? Did they really find Noah's Ark? Uh, where he found the Red Sea crossing. And when I say find, he didn't technically find them. They, people have been, they've known about this forever. He's just, he was a doctor who had a calling to take his money and go to all these places and document them himself, as well as get a certain scientific proof to this, you know, like uh, take and go and get tests on certain things. Like for instance, he went to Sodom and Gomorrah and found sulfur balls there, which were 99.99% .99 pure sulfur, which uh, as far as, as I know, doesn't even exist on this planet. You, you don't get that type of sulfur here. Um, but the sulfur came back like that, uh, where he went to the Red Sea crossing and found these giant pillars erected by King Solomon himself. Um, marking where the Red Sea crossing was and scuba diving into the Red Sea and finding Egyptian wheels that were um, at the bottom there uh, within the sea. Because if you remember uh, when Pharaoh went across to get to the Israelites, the wheels busted off and they came undone and they, he found Egyptian wheels there. Um, when he went to Mount Sinai, which people have known, I'm guessing, I think since the mid-1800s, if I'm not mistaken. But <clears throat> there's this, uh, I believe it's called metamorphic rock, where the rock burns from the inside out. So the entire top of Mount Sinai was just black. It was pitch black mountain. All the rest of the mountains surrounding it were this kind of brownish, reddish color. This one was burnt to a crisp at the top. The, the rock that was cleft in two where water came out of it was not this little rock that they held up. The Israelites would still be there trying to drink water if that was the case. This rock was like a two-story boulder that was literally sliced right in two and you could see water erosion coming out from the center of it in the most arid place on the planet. Um, he found the Ark of the Covenant which was underneath Golgotha. Uh, when Nebuchadnezzar came to put siege on Jerusalem, Jeremiah, I guess, took all the artifacts from the temple and hid them in a bunch of caverns underneath Jerusalem. <laughs> Excuse me. One of these caverns was directly underneath Golgotha, and he set everything up in the exact position that it was in in the temple. Apparently, there was enough space in this cave area to do so. And he set the ark in the center in the back, and supposedly... You know, uh, centuries later, when Jesus was crucified, he was crucified directly above the Ark of the Covenant within this cavern. And when the earth shook and the uh, earthquake cracked open the space where Jesus was at at the cross underneath the Golgotha, his blood ran down through the crack into the cave and landed on the mercy seat. And Ron White got this uh, blood tested. He put it in a saline solution for three days, and after three days, the blood came alive again. So, a lot of interesting stuff. And I, I know what you're asking, like, well, if it's there and the, the Israeli government knows about it, why don't they go and, you know, like, pull it out, go in and ex excavate it, sorry. Oh my goodness, acid reflux, that was my bad. Just go in there and yank it out. And um, they tried to. And every time that they did, supposedly people died. So they're just like, you know what, we're just going to leave it here. And 
Supposedly, Ron White was allowed to film it <clears throat> and give these copies to certain people where it will be revealed at a later date at God's appointed time to show where the Ark is and how to get it out. And now it's okay to remove the Ark. So, again, a lot of controversy, but also a lot of tests to back up this certain thing. And there's uh, the main question to ask with Ron Wyatt on this whole escapade he went on he's supposed to be i guess the indiana jones of today sadly he passed away back in like i think 99 or 2000 or something like that but uh um all his findings he found something else too i can't remember what it was i'm sorry uh but um it brings up the question is that if all his findings were fake, if, if all the tests he did were fake, if all the filming he did with the Ark of the Covenant technically didn't exist or, or even was fake, if there is a copy, um, the main question is, why would he do that? Now, I, I want you to sit and think really hard on this question and speculate from a true Christian perspective, which I believe Ron White was. I believe he was a true Christian at heart. Why would he do that if it was fake? Either he believed that it was real and it was fake, or he knew it was fake and still said it was real, or it was real and he announced it as real. Those are the three options you get. It kind of goes into the same analogy of Jesus saying that he was God. You know, it's either he was a liar, a lunatic, or he was a real deal. This is what C.S. Lewis goes into. It's what's called the trilemma. Uh, you know, if, if he believed that he was God and he wasn't God, then Jesus was a lunatic. If he knew he wasn't God, but said he was God, he was a liar. And he was the greatest of liars because he's fooled pretty much half of the world into believing that he was. Or you have the third option, which he said he was God and he was God. Those are the three options. That's what's called the trilemma. And I think when it comes to Christians and their enunciations to what they have in their findings, like with Ron White, with the um, all, all the different sites that he's found, all, the, all these di different biblical items or areas, uh, it, it's either it was fake and he believed it was real, or he knew it was fake, but he said it was real, or it was real and he said it was real. Those are the three options. So why did he do this? Why did he announce these things? If he was a true Christian, which I believe he was, the first two, well, the second one has to be out. Because if he knew that they were fake, and he's going to announce it as fake, is almost blaspheming God. It's almost heretical in a sense. It's like uh, trying to promote God through nefarious means and ill intent and wrongdoing. And as a true Christian, I do not believe that Ron White would have did that. So there's the second option, well, technically the first option, which is it was fake, but he legitimately thought that it was real. You know, like he went there, wow, look at all this. Okay, well, it, this, this brings up a whole slew of questions. First off, all the tests would have to be completely inconclusive. Uh, all the people that he brought this testing to, like with the sulfur, they would have to lie to him as well and specify that, nope, these are fake. Or they knew that it was fake, but specify to Ron that it was real. You know, like take pictures of the Egyptian wheels or pull them out and get them all polished up and be like, okay, is this a real deal? You know, and someone look at it, you know, like a... a antiquity or something or a historian or an archaeologist you know look at the wheel know it's fake and then go around and say yeah this is real ding ding you know it's like he would have to be duped through the whole process of his find not just the finding but the tests of the finding like the locations of the finding that where the bible literally specifies that they are now it doesn't specify where the ark of the covenant is um I believe that that was hidden and it was hidden for a reason and Ron White was one of the people who actually found it and he was led to being uh, sh he was shown where it was because he was walking in Jerusalem one day and they were at Golgotha and he was with some person and he pointed and said and over there is where the Ark of the Covenant is buried he just blurted it out and the guy next to him says oh really oh we'll give you some money to go and you know do do your search to find it like 
just that quick, that instantaneous, happened just immaculately. Ron didn't know why he said it. He just blurted it out. It was almost like the Holy Spirit compelled him to say that. So now apparently the Holy Spirit's in on the gig too. You see what I'm saying? There's there's too many there's too many things in the way for this to be fake and for Ron White to believe it. I don't think Ron, a doctor, you know, uh, was led in defining all these things and was stupid enough to believe it if it was fake. Again, he he would have had no discernment whatsoever in these findings. Like he just would have blatantly went, oh, that's what it is. Okay, let's go. I don't believe that. So the idea of every one of these findings being fake and him just merely believing they were real <laughs> seems to me just, it's, 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 a, it's a moot topic. It's, you would have to be the dumbest person on the planet to believe this stuff if, if all of it was fake and all the tests that came back w were inconclusive uh, or come back as fake and then everyone else who did the test for him lied to him and said that they were real so the only other option you have is that these things were real and he believed that they were real and followed suit and came out and announced them as real the reason i say this <clears throat> is because you take this same analogy and you use it in the Pentecostal movement. Again, don't like to use that word because it's not. This is a Christian. This is a God movement. It's not set to one denomination. A lot of the prophets that I listen to, they're not even Pentecostal. A lot of these people and, and prophets that are coming out just in, in mass uh, online that are talking, a lot of them have nothing to do with the Pentecostal movement. A lot of them didn't even believe in speaking in tongues as far as I know or, or doing this whole prophetic word stuff until these last few years when all of a sudden we just got zapped with some lightning and it's like, we got to start making these videos. Again, forgive me for saying Pentecostal, but I'm just using that as reference to explaining exactly what we're talking about this last harvest season. All the prophetic words that are coming out, all the speaking in tongues that is going down, all the healings that are happening, all the all the anointings and the raising of the oils and uh, the, the exorcisms that's, that's going down in a mass scale. Like, in things we've never seen before, I don't think in any time, because it's on a worldly scale. You look at Asbury uh, with the revival that was happening there, and it, that's just that's one one revival. I don't know if you guys noticed, but there's those types of revivals breaking out all over the planet lately. It's it's been nuts. I mean, Asbury was just one out of like just multiple amounts of revivals that are happening across the planet, and they're not being. Um, relayed in the news uh the news is not coming out and, and breaking forth on on this even though it's uh we, we see videos of it happening everywhere i see clips all over the place of you know breakouts happening all, i mean man it's just uh, too many places to count <laughs> so we need to take all of this we need to take what the prophets are saying and the words that they're having and the dreams that they're having and the visions they're seeing and just the, the speaking of God relaying messages to them and the healings and the revivals and the exorcisms and just all of that. Take all of that and put it into the same analogy of Ron White. Is this fake? And do people just believe it's real? Does everyone, and I mean everyone who's doing this, know it's fake? and are promoting it as real or is it the real deal and they're promoting it as such yes this is real i'm compelled to do this because i know in my soul i know in my spirit this is happening this is i'm being convicted by the spirit this is happening well we have a bit of a problem with the second one if it's fake and they know it's fake and they're promoting it as real that means there's no real Christians left, man. I mean, it's it's such a small number of people that everyone else is lying uh, in mass abundance to the entire world. Everyone's in on it. Everyone knows it's fake. Everyone's doing the exact same thing to dupe people, and they're saying they're Christians. I don't know. Maybe it's just me. I can't believe that. I can't believe that all of these people 
thousands and thousands and thousands of people who are listening to this, probably millions across the planet who are listening to this, engaged in this, following suit of what these prophets are saying, um, are, are being duped into a lie. And not only that, but all these people who are doing it are liars, are blasphemers, are heretics. It just, it, it seems so completely outrageous that the only thing I could possibly think of, <clears throat> um, well, not on that, but on the first one would be mass hysteria, where if it was fake, but everyone believed it was real, where all these prophets are coming out and having visions and stuff. And it's, it's almost like a, what one person said, a self-fulfilling prophecy. But even then, a self-fulfilling prophecy doesn't work because it's... It, somehow by some means each person that goes out and makes these videos if they believe what they were seeing and expressing was real would have to have somehow a fake prophecy or a fake vision enter into them and then relay it outward and the only way that i can think about this is satanic influence like this is a demonic activity that's happening and on a mass scale where true Christians who are supposed to have discernment and understanding of the spirit and guidance of the Holy Spirit through their lives are all being duped by a lie. And I think Hank Kuhneman said it best because he was asked that question before. He's like, is, is, you think this is all real? You think these people are having these visions? You think there's a, this explosion of prophecy coming out and healing? And Hank, Hank pretty much, uh, and I'm paraphrasing, said it like, if this is all fake, we have more to worry about than these messages that are going out. We are being duped by the letter. All Christians are being duped right now. I mean, there's there's some people, yes, that do not believe in this, you know, and they're 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 just following suit and thinking that it's all fake and stuff. So maybe they're the real Christians. I don't know. All I know is we have tons and tons and tons of people coming out and believing this saying they have visions, speaking it out, giving prophetic words, giving daily prophetic words from the Lord, relaying messages from him to the people uh, in, in, just in, in a mass scale that has been never seen on the face of this planet in any time in history. And it's a lie. The whole everyone just being duped into a mass hysteria, thinking that this last harvest thing is going down when it actually isn't, or that God is speaking to them or relaying daily messages by the thousands upon thousands of all these people and everyone listening to it. Not one person going, you know, maybe this is a lie. <laughs> it just, it seems, it seems so out there. It seems so absolutely crazy that abs that everyone would be duped or everyone who's following this or speaking into it or listening to it is completely duped. Like just like this is new levels of mass hysteria that I've seen that puts, you know, Nazi Germany to shame. Okay. It's, it's crazy to think that. So the last one in the trilemma that we have would be, this is real. And the people are speaking it believe it's real and they know it's real and the people that are listening to it understand it's real and this is real <laughs> like i don't know i don't know how else to say it this is real something is happening we've been seeing stuff that's just inexplainable that's been going down these uh past couple of years longer than that it's been going on but you know i mean it's people have been uh, prophesying you know forever but in this last harvest season, within the past couple decades, it's been slowly bubbling and slowly brewing. And then after Trump came in, um, even a little bit before then, there were people like uh, Kim Clement who was prophesying on Trump winning. And the stuff he was saying was, was just so, so spot on, like years before Trump even ran. I mean, it just nailed him to a T and nailed what's going down with the two presidents right now and the battle we're having with that, like who is a legit president. Um, the whole military being in this sting operation where how um, the government isn't in control, like the military is in control right now. Uh, all this stuff that has been speaking and now as we're starting to wake up, we're seeing it come to pass. Like this is, this is, ha this is actually happening. Like we're seeing this happen. And then after Trump won, it blew out more. After 2020, it just boomed. I mean, almost from day one, almost since that, uh, the election day in November of, of 2020, almost Johnny on the spot. 
after we found out that Biden like won, it it's just something on YouTube. Just my algorithms changed. It just all of a sudden profits went boom and just blew out and everywhere there was a prophetic word now i'm not saying all of these are real i'm saying to have discernment i'm not saying to just believe everything you see believe everything you listen to you need to have a discerning heart and a discerning spirit and ask the holy spirit what these videos are because when it first happened um and covid was still around as well too i'm the first round i mean not this umpteen whatever we're at now uh there were there was a lot of words coming out and it was like some of them were just off the wall crazy and i i think what happened is that the devil knew what was happening and he was trying to counteract the prophetic movement by bringing in his own words and causing confusion and derision and uh and division sorry uh as well and even the prophets speak about this you know take everything with a discerning heart don't just listen to us listen to the lord ask the lord about this stuff um go to him first don't have just favorite prophets i mean we all have prophets that we listen to we all have people that we i listen to julie green on a daily basis i listen to or read diana Lorcan on a daily basis there's lots of people that i try to hone in on because they speak to me the best for where i'm at in uh, my walk and there's other people who may have more harsher or lighter tones and prophetic words that speak to other people during their walk and they need to um just get guidance from the lord on who best to listen to for where they're being called in their life when it first started i was so it was sort of buckshot i was sort of scattered everywhere and i'm like who's what is going on here what are all these people doing on youtube and i started listening to them one by one and it was very confusing at first there was a lot of hit and miss all over the place and the prophet spoke about that too there's going to be a lot of you know the, the enemy will come in you know as wolves in sheep's clothing to try and cause division try and cause confusion um it'll be a thousand front attack and the prophetic movement is not excluded from this uh, the church in general is not excluded from this there are a lot of wolves in sheep's clothing even in many congregations today that are trying to sway people away from god um and they're using many different tactics and one of them is a prophetic movement as well too so there was a lot of confusion when i first listened to it and i'm like i have no idea what's going on and the lord i think throughout time throughout the years like i said when i was at work at the insurance agency and i had a lot of time on my hands of just paying bills and answering the phone and i would be listening to these words and the lord sculpted sculpted me during that time to hone in on the particular people that he wanted me to listen to that he that i knew this was coming from god this wasn't uh, the works of the enemy and um it's it's still going on today I, I still see a bunch of prophetic words coming out here and there that seemed a little skewed but it, it, it's not as bad as it originally intended and i think the reason for that is is because people christians themselves are becoming very aware they're using their discernment they're understanding who to listen to who god is literally speaking to and relaying the messages from and they could get their answers from them as well as from the lord obviously that's the first person you go to um always go to him but the you know the bible also says that god will not do a thing unless he relays it to his prophets first and so this is this is kind of a legit thing there is stuff that is going down there is certain prophetic words that if you want to heed from the lord you know to listen to them and listen to what they have to say and be prepared be geared up get ready for what is going to be coming down um coming down the chute so to say and i think a lot of people are starting to become aware to all of this especially within the last few years uh, people are starting to wake up i can't really say that i had many friends or family or even certain people within my congregation um that that are truly like paying attention to this or if they are they just they think it's a joke or they're not believing a, a lot of what is happening today i think sooner or later as god said those who will be part of this last harvest season will catch up they, they, they everyone comes in their different timing and the problem with me is that i'm always trying to rush it I, I want them to wake up right now and they're on their own walk and i think a lot of us need to understand that and realize that is the time is short you know the time is at hand things are going to be breaking forth but some people need to go through that dark period they need to see the darkness happening they they need to go through this um 
almost near-death experience of our nation or of the world for them to finally wake up and move into what they're calling is. Uh, each person has a different walk and a different experience, and God knows there are appointed times in which they're going to move forward and be called into what the Lord's calling them to do. And now might not be the time. It's just like the things I'm asking for <clears throat> with certain healings of friends of mine or like with, with, with my wife too. You know, it's like, I just want it now. Now to heal them now. I'm, I'm tired of waiting. This is BS. This is stupid. You know, it's pretty much how I talk to the Lord a lot of the times. So I know I shouldn't. I should give him praise and thanks for the stuff he has given me in my life. But there's just a lot of the times where it's like, uh, until I see them healed, I, I can't be happy. I can't walk blissfully in life, no matter how much stuff is given to me, if I know that they're suffering and in pain. Like, all this junk that is in front of me is meaningless. You know, and I would give it all up just to see them healed. And, but I know that it will be coming at its appointed time. And I need to just give that pain and suffering to the Lord so that he can work with it and work in my life through me on the things that I need to do and at their appointed times they will be healed and I think that's going to happen with a lot of people here around the world as well some friends and family members that you may have might not be woken up to all that is going down right now and they have their appointed time and their appointed season to wake up now you could keep praying for them keep speaking to them uh don't bombard them so much with videos and stuff don't send them any of my videos they'll probably hate it uh you know but uh pray for them just let the just have the lord guide them and you know move them into their calling and hopefully it won't be as harsh when the lights do go out and all the s hits the fan if you know what i mean do I think this is all just a bunch of Pentecostal mumbo jumbo? Uh, no, no, I believe there's a lot of wolves in sheep clothing out there. I, I believe there's a lot of deception going on today. I believe that the enemy is working overtime to try and deceive us and deter us and reroute us away from God, uh, cause division and derision and hate. Um, even with this whole Palestine and Israel thing, I stand with Israel, but I think the idea is to realize that it's not about taking sides. It's about taking God's side because he loves everyone. He wants the Palestinians saved just as much as the Jews or those in Israel. Um, but he did make a covenant with Israel and we need to remember his covenant and that we are supposed to, you know, he blesses those that blesses them and curses those that curse them. And the idea is to bring the Palestinians and Hamas even into his fold, into the body of Christ. Um, and that's one of the tactics that he's using. And he's using many things against the prophetic movement today. And I think we need to be aware uh, and have very good discernment and words from the Lord on what to believe and where to walk. And I mean, just focus on him totally. We could listen to prophetic words. I'm not saying not to do that. I do on a daily basis, many of them, you know, not as much as I used to, because I know there's other things I need to focus on right now, but I, I think we need to be aware of what is happening and what is going down. And this is not mumbo jumbo. This is not just a bunch of hogwash that's happening. This is, this is too big of a scale, uh, too high, too many people, too many Christians, real Christians that are doing this, uh, that are from many denominations that are rising up in what is going down today that are very aware of this last harvest season that we are entering into. And I think you need to put your own denominational upbringing of the past aside. Just take your little box of what a church is, put it over here and go, the Lord's doing something. And I need to start being aware of the changes that are happening today. Don't believe everything you see, okay? Uh, in the words of Lou Reed, believe half of what you see and none of what you hear. <laughs> so, um, unless it's coming from the Lord and have discernment for what the Lord is pulling you into and um, take take note of what some of these prophets are saying. I know it's it's crazy. Me growing up thinking that speaking in tongues were part of the whole holding snakes and dancing around and going, blah, blah, blah. but we need to remember the Bible speaks 
The Bible speaks of tongues. It speaks of prophecy. It speaks of visions and dreams. It speaks of healings. It speaks of raising the dead. It's telling you this is what you're going to do. You need to be ready to do this. And all these people that are like, ah, it's just from the past. That's not happening anymore. Right. So the first 4,000 years, all prophecy, healings, miraculous works of the Holy Spirit or God doing wonders. And then the 2,000 years after Christ, nothing. It's just a blank fart. I'm sorry, time has not ended yet. We're still going. There's still stuff that needs to be done. If anything, it emphasizes more on today than anything in the past. It, it drills home the point that we are supposed to be doing this. There's going to be coming a time where we are doing this before the tribulation. There's going to be a last harvest season. It emphasizes this like straight to the point. You know, you will be doing this. Jesus said, there will be some that are coming who will do even greater works than I did because I'm going home to the Father. The Holy Spirit's going to come down. And he's going to blow you people away. Something is coming and we need to be ready for it. We can't blow it off anymore. We can't say it's not happening. I'm sorry. That is the word of the enemy. He doesn't want you to have that power. He doesn't want you to have the gifts of the spirit. He doesn't want you to work these miracles, to think none of this is going down when there's been an explosion of prophetic words and healings happening and visions and dreams is just in astronomical amounts. To think every single one of these is fake or they're done by liars is just, I mean, it's, I, I can't even fathom the concept. Something's going down, folks. Something is happening. Something is changing within the church and it is changing within the world. Something is flipping the tables and we need to be aware and awake to what is happening. I suppose that's where I'm going to leave it for right now. Uh, my book recommendation for today um, is called The Late Great United States Oops, by, March Hit <laughs> by Mark Hitchcock. Now, it's been some time since I read this book, and I'm recommending this because I almost want to go over it one more time and see if it ties in to uh, a lot of what is happening today because it's about uh, what Bible prophecy reveals about America's last days. So, and I'm just, I'm, I'm wanting to see if it ties into anything that is going on with the prophetic movements in this last harvest season, as well as what many uh, authors or believers of Revelation and how America is going to play out during those days, if it's actually in sync. And if it ties in and what may be different from what we thought in the past to what is happening today. So this is cologne. Not sure why it's laying on my desk. And as a um, prophet site uh, for you to check out, I'm going to do Manuel Johnson with Mega Praise Ministries. Now he's the one where, as I explained in the past, really energetic, like, ah, praise the Lord, you know, just really going out and energetic and spunky. And um, he's had some interesting visions as well, too, and some words to give out. Uh, a lot of different speakers on his site as well, too. I'm going to put the link below so that you can listen to him. He's definitely a quad shot of espresso. So be on guard for that one. That's, that's, that's my only warning with him is that he's energetic. I, I wish I had his energy and I wish I had the emotion that he has with the Lord. Um, I'm going to get into that subject uh, in one of these upcoming episodes too about how, how I'm feeling about all this. I was going to do it in this one, but I don't think it's probably the right place to start speaking in on it. I think I will do this on a later episode uh, and continue in on something else that has been sort of on my chest that I want to give off. It's part of my own personal walk. The whole reason why I'm doing this video is just to get it out and express it to you on how I feel on a lot of these things. And this is kind of an important one. Um, but one that I think a lot of us may be going through or questioning, and that has to do with the walk with the Lord and putting him first and um, how we are to love the Lord. A um, lot, of, lot of different feelings and emotions on that one. So uh, maybe we can go through that together. And if some of you guys have any answers for me on how to work through that as well, uh, that would be nice. Uh, and if there's anything that you guys want to put in, like, what do you believe in all this 
prophecy that's going on today in this last harvest season um, with with just the explosion of all the YouTube videos and the healings and the visions and dreams that people are having, not just me, just so many people across the planet. Uh, what's your take on it? Uh, what's your trilemma answer? Do you think it's fake and people believe it's real or do you think people know it's real and they're saying it's I mean saying it's uh they know it's fake sorry and they're saying it's real or is it the real deal you know and they're exclaiming it as such so uh i guess that's it uh, heavenly father thank you for this time and i know i went on a bit of a tangent so i'm gonna have to polish up some of the editing today because i know I, I went off on a few places and hopefully i can uh, bring it back in a little bit more and <laughs> make it more well-rounded um i hope people got a little bit of an understanding into the prophetic words and how with this trilemma they need to really think and understand why people are doing this and why are they speaking it is this a real deal is this just a uh, fake is it a bunch of lies and if so why would true christians be doing this are they true christians uh and if not why are there so many people across the planet today saying they're christians and they're not and exposing a lie or are we being duped by the evil one or is this actually you? Is this really going down? Is this happening? We need to start paying attention to what all these prophetic words are coming about, um, are trying to tell us. We need to be awake and aware and ready and suit up and gear up in our daily armor, which I didn't ask for today. Lord, sorry, forgive me. Please give me my spiritual armor so I could overcome the wells of the evil one today. I pray all of you do that as well, too to give you discernment from the Holy Spirit and understanding of what is happening and to um, fall into the place of what the Lord is calling you to do and realize that he is the one who wants to give you gifts and wants to give you prosperity and give you health and give you a giant turnaround during this season it is not um, wanting to cause pain and division and hatred and tiredness and weariness and lack of discernment and lack of voice of hearing him. He wants to be your father, he wants you to be part of his family. But we need to start listening to what he's calling us to do. And some people are trying to tell us that and getting words from the Lord, speaking to us so that they can re relay the message to the masses. And I think it's time we start paying attention and realizing that not all of this is mumbo jumbo. There's something going down. We need to pay attention to it. And Lord, I hope that many will become awake and aware to what it is you're trying to do in this season. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Well, that's it. Uh, time to splice and dice and I'll try and get this out today. I'm going to be going out tonight. So if you don't see it uh, Saturday night, you will see this hopefully Sunday. I'll talk to you later. Uh, take care and God bless. Oh, and before I forget, I hope all of you have a wonderful, happy Thanksgiving day. Uh, that's coming before my next episode. So I almost forgot to mention that. Please find something to be thankful for that the Lord has given you, even if it's just that day. Um, give thanks to the Lord. Uh, give thanks to your nation. Give thanks for your family. Give thanks for your loved ones, your friends, your spouse, your children, your job, your finances, uh, the air you breathe. <laughs> so, uh, just be thankful in the Lord for what he has made. And that is it. Love you all, and I'll talk to you next week. Bye for now.